Hello, Fear the Mirror, Cat here, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play of Lazen de Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. Master Quest. I have actually thought that maybe the fact that it's the Master Quest version will make these videos less popular, because most people probably haven't played this version, but... Well, it's the version I've got, and as I said um, in the first episode, it seems to me that if I'm going to get a version, I might as well get the most definitive version that I can actually put on my computer. So, you might have noticed a little clue there on the ground. There's the Triforce, and that's uh, cluing you in on what you have to do here, which is to use the, the royal tune, the Zelda's lullaby. If you remember in the last episode we collected some cuckoos, and uh, in this episode we're going to be mostly uh, spider hunting, um, and getting a couple, well one, one extra song as well, and a couple of other side quests taken care of. We are nearly done with these side quests. There are a lot of them, but eventually we'll be done. I don't know why it doesn't just move the tombstone aside, but just destroys it. I mean, presumably this is the only time someone has ever opened this, because if people open this tomb on a regular basis, then they must have to keep on rebuilding it a lot. It's kind of messing with the tombstones here in a way that I don't think uh, people really should. I, mean, I suppose he's doing it for this mission, which is a necessary and important thing to do to save Hyrule, but still. You know, this is sort of like destroying the the people's uh, pots and um, their containers in their houses in order to take the rupees inside that don't belong to you. You know, it's, it's a very strange culture, I suppose. They have in high rule where no one really finds this stuff. And I suck at um, using the jump attack. Uh, which is why I'm not really using it here. I only use it when I absolutely have to. I believe it's Z plus A when you're on the N64 to do the attack, the jump attack, which would make it a lot easier to kill these things, but never mind. I guess with the tomb it doesn't matter that much because the only way to destroy it is using Zelda Zorobi and only members of the royal family get that and there's no reason the royal family would destroy their own team so maybe that's why that's okay I don't know I mean these people must have gotten in here somehow obviously they're not the royal family because their bodies are not um, intact as it were Speaking of, of death um, and morbid things, these are the Gibbs Isles, and um, I don't know why I'm laughing because they are creepy things, it has to be said. Zombies, basically. And I make this screeching noise, but apart from being quite scary, freezes you on the spot, which makes it easier for them to attack you. Mm. Yes, 
past the tents. I believe you meet the composer brothers in my jewel's mask. Suppose it's possible you meet them later on in this game. I really don't remember. I don't know what happens if you drop into that sort of green slime there. If it actually hurts you or not. I'll never bring brave enough to find out, so. The Sun Song is very useful for uh, things you can only get at night, like certain gold school tollers. So we will be using that a lot. So I suppose I ought to sort of show off to you um, what a uh, doe does as well and what it looks like. So that's that's just why I've, I'm doing this. But yeah, I should be careful, see, because it's frozen you. And uh, fortunately, using the sun song also sort of stuns them. They will start moving again if you attack them. Uh, if you just attack them the admittedly silly way I do, which is by not doing any jump attacks at all, or, or any kind of special attacks, but just the basic sword um, cut, then they do take a long time to be destroyed as well. Now I've cut out a lot of the times when Gibdos have attacked me and I've, uh, I've basically been killed by them. They do a lot of damage if they catch you. Now if you pull the wrong tomb here you awaken a Poe and the Poe's are ghosts and they attack you so just watch which tombs I'm pulling open. So what you have to do is play the sun song here to stun it. Quickly run forward, slash it with your sword, run backwards before it can freeze you and play the sun song again and repeat over and over until it's been destroyed. Now I've cut out the seven or eight times I had to attack this thing before I got rid of it. It does take a while if you just use a normal sword attack like that. I really ought to practice before the next episode on doing better sword techniques. I've also cut out a couple of times when I just forgot, like just there, uh, with it's Ocarina song to play. This is why I take the easy route of just looking up what the notes are before I play them, because sometimes I just forget. And if I wasn't doing that, I would be writing them down and then looking them up. So I might as well just look at them, look them up on the save screen. You get a really big uh, chest for this. It's only a heart piece. And then you get a really small chest for the next item, which you actually vitally need. But we'll come to that in a second. But it just seems kind of weird. Uh, I know I'm not the first person to say that. I am watching other people's that space just to see how they do it. Um, watching along. And when I agree with them, I will say, you know, I think this. If I don't agree with it, I'm not just going to copy them. It's kind of weird how the, the grave digger just sort of passes you by, you know, he, he doesn't seem to mind that much that so you're moving the tombstone around. You can buy a Hydeulian seal, but it's much easier just to go this way. Now the interesting thing about this is I've heard that originally Hylian sealed 
had the crescent moon of, um, the Islamic crescent moon on it, one of their symbols, but then they changed the design because that caused controversy. So that's quite interesting. I don't know if they just changed it with the Master Quest or if they just changed it with the European version or what, but they it's definitely not what was in the original version. See, Dampai says don't mess with the greys, but that's all he does. Yeah, otherwise, he doesn't seem to mind. Now, you might remember a couple of episodes ago, I said I might show some things off, but if it's something that's really hard to do, I don't care if I get 100% or not that much, so I'm not gonna um, do everything. I will just show off everything. And in this particular case, you can get him to search the entire graveyard, and in a totally random place, it's different each time, he will find a heart piece. But, I'm not going to bother to do that, I've just shown off what he does. So if you want to wait for him to get to the next place and dig there, and the place after that and dig there, then that's fine. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to show some Skotolas that only appear at night now. But, yeah, I'm not going to bother, because you could go to the first place he goes to, and it'll be there, or it could be in the 20th place you go to, and Dante moves very slowly as well. So, you can only get that as a kid though, unfortunately. Dante does not uh, do his graveyard tour when you're an adult, so... Now, it's the house of Skotola that that gold Skotola was next to. I'm not going to show it off in this part because it's really creepy. I'm only going to go in there if I absolutely have to. But there is a good reason we've been collecting these gold Skotolas. And uh, you will find out um, in the house of uh, Skotola what it is that they're useful for. For some reason I forgot that I actually had to be on the ground to be able to get that. I've kept most of the stuff in here, but one final thing I've gotten rid of is the times when I'm just running across high. High, high real shit, uh, field. You might be able to tell if I'm tired or not. I tend to wear my heart on my sleeve, which is quite annoying because I have to pull it off my sleeve and sew it onto a different sleeve whenever I change clothes. But, um, yeah, because I wear my heart on my sleeve and I tend to show my emotions quite easily. You might be able to tell if I'm in a tearful mood, judging by my commentary on the games, or if I'm not. And I'm quite tired right now. See, if I showed him walk across the field, it would just be more of this. So, skip ahead a bit to the entrance to Kakura Village, and uh, you get to see a bigger, another glimpse of the big uh, style child there, because I didn't think I showed it off very well in the last episode and I seem to just come across one then so 
What happened here was I thought because it was getting close to day that it actually reached daytime by the time I get into Kakori uh, village. So I Kakori forest, though it's actually a village within a forest. So um, I played this and you'll see what happens. I made it daytime again. So then, uh, to put it again, to get it to go tonight. Anyway, um, yes. It just starts off from the entrance to the area, if it's an area where time doesn't pass. And it doesn't go from day to night. So if you go up onto this mound, into um, the Nurtle Brothers house, which is here, it's just next to the place where you called in to get the Kakure, um sword, then um, you can go around the back of this thing and get another gold school toller, which is going to be the last thing we do for this part. Um, our school toller hunting sort of episode. Now, I probably mentioned this before, I am not good at uh, the sword uh, jump attack. But as you can see. And Arthur just keeps on saying hey until you talk to her, so if she keeps on doing this, you might as well talk to her. She doesn't have anything interesting to say, but she won't shut up. Otherwise, um... Listen. Thanks. I, I can see why you would point that out when I'm clearly on a side quest. I see, I don't get what they were doing with that. Surely if they put side quests in, then they should know that you're not just going to do the main quests, you're going to do the side quests as well. So I don't know why they have Navi interrupting you to tell you, look, you should be back on the main quest right now. I know it's a kid's game and maybe they need sort of reminding, I suppose, of what the main quest is in case you get really lost or whatever, but still, it just seems kind of patronising to me. Anyway, uh, we're coming up to the end of this episode, so I'm, I'm just going to say goodbye now, and I will uh, see you in the next part.